hi, my name's Bob Babbitt. And I play bass. I feel fortunate, very fortunate to be in the situations and the places and to meet and work with uh, the people that I've uh, encountered in, the, in my musical journey. I got locked into Detroit uh, and started getting a lot of work uh, with the black artists. Uh, uh, before Motown, there was a lot of other companies, a lot of people coming in, and we, and we were doing a lot of records uh, coming out there, but there was a core of guys, a uh, couple rhythm sections, uh, that were doing the bass, the, the biggest majority of the records. Something I'd just like to know from, from me, when y'all were creating, creating that music, you had to know you were creating something special. I mean, Jesus. Well, a lot, lot, lot of, uh, uh, I think a lot of the guys were just happy to be working, yeah. you know, bringing up families and never thinking that anything was going to come out of it that was going to be, people would be talking about it, you know, Man, so years, cool. 40, 50 years later. Yeah. Well, the one day that sticks out for me is the first day I got called to Motown. I had been working live with Stevie Wonder and some with Marvin Gaye. And then Stevie called me for a session. And uh, I remember the tune, it was a, a cover of the Beatles, We Can Work It Out, which was a pretty big hit for him. Uh, that, 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 that's, that's one of, one of the highlight, highlight days that, of, of my career, I guess. You know, and I was a little nervous going over there because the original bass player, James Jamerson, had was doing just about all the work and uh there might have been some earlier records some real early records that he didn't do but he he it, he locked into where he was getting called for everything and again it's that when you're playing on hits for people they don't want to change the formula you know and it was so successful and uh they had great writers they had great uh uh producers the studio the engineers were, I don't know, they were like ahead of their time. I heard a story not too long ago from one of the original engineers uh, that when they uh, were looking to put an echo chamber in, in Motown, uh, which they had in the attic of the house, and the very first house where the studio was, they, uh, they bought sides of uh, airplanes, B-52 bombers, or, or whatever there was in that day, B-50s, B-52s, and they became the echo chambers, the side of the plane. And then they didn't have no compressors, so guess what they did? They bought the airplane compressor and used that. That was their first compressor. <laughs> Pretty wild, yeah. So there were some guys over there that they were, uh, uh, I don't know they're probably from a different planet. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they, they just when you can listen to some of them records right now, they just bounce at and hit you in the face like, you know, uh, maybe they cut them so hot. I don't know how they came about it, but they, um, there was, uh, combination of all the, the right ingredients at that time. In Detroit, uh, the couple tunes I played on from Marvin Gaye's What's Going On album. And Jameson played on What's Going On. We gotta get that straight because he played on that. But there was a couple other hits, Mercy, Mercy Me, <clears throat> and uh, Inner City Blues, yeah. Well, I, I happened to do those, those couple tunes. And uh, uh, kind of proud of that. Uh, Sign Seal Delivered, Stevie Wonder, War, Edwin Starr, Ball of Confusion, Diana Ross, Touch Me in the Morning. But there was two songs I really locked into. Gladys Knight had left Motown and signed with Buddha Records. Motown was moving her whole operations to California. So I decided to move. There was producers coming in to uh, uh, Detroit from the East Coast as well as from different places and uh, 
there was a few of them that said, you know, if you ever think about moving, you should think about moving to the East Coast. So okay, so I made that move to the East Coast, and uh, after I'd been there a while, <clears throat> I played on uh, Midnight Train in Georgia, Gladys Knight. That's 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 really that song was the only song I played on that actually won a Grammy, and I I, I felt really good about that. But I, I just to this day, if I hear it. You know, it just it's 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 good. It's a good, good feeling. You know, it's a high, definitely a highlight. 